Once upon a time, I dreamt I was a butterfly, fluttering hither and thither. To all intents and purposes, a butterfly. I was conscious only of my happiness as a butterfly, unaware that I was myself. Soon I waked, and there I was, veritably myself again. Now I do not know whether I was then a man, dreaming I was a butterfly, or whether I am now a butterfly, dreaming I am a man. Dreams have been a curiosity since at least humans have been able to write them. There are texts taken from about 2000 BC that contain not only accounts of dreams, but also an interpretation of the dreams. Luckily, since the discovery of the scientific method, some things about dreaming have become more known. But, as you'll find out, we still have a long way to go to unravel the mysteries of dreaming. Dreams are generally defined as the images, thoughts, and emotions that are experienced during sleep. Unfortunately, because of their subjective nature, they're hard to do research on though that hasn't stopped scientists from trying to do so. Many use EEG or similar technology to assist with measuring neural activity. They will also do it in conjunction with dream journals or other forms of self-report. Neurotechnologies have been developed, including using neural decoding to decipher and even predict the visuals of dreams, though it's still in the early stages. Lucid dreaming is a special phenomenon where one becomes aware that they are in a dream. This is a relatively rare occurrence, but you may be able to influence whether or not it happens, as we'll see later. And, in fact, it does seem to be a state that people desire, because if you are aware enough in a lucid dream, you can actually control the dream. If you plan on lucid dreaming, it might be good to know whether or not you dream in the first place. While this question hasn't been definitively answered by science, most sleep psychologists will answer this question by saying, everyone dreams, but not everybody recalls their dreams. Personally, it's hard for me to say to somebody, you've had this experience, you just don't know that you've had this experience. But there is some basis for thinking this way, so I'll leave it by saying, at the very least, most people dream. We do know, thanks to this guy named Hobson, that dreams often share a set of five characteristics. They tend to have a logical content, intense emotions, acceptance of strange content, strange sensory experiences, and difficulty remembering dream content. Though, that last one can be strengthened, as we'll discuss later. There are several theories on why we dream. We don't have a definitive answer, but the most popular one right now is activation synthesis. The idea is that high levels of activity in the brainstem result in REM sleep and dreaming, which makes sense given that we know that all dreaming takes place during REM sleep. The thing is that this activity creates random signals, but our brain, being the meaning-making machine that it is, organizes that randomness into coherent dreams. Another theory is known as self-organization theory. It posits that dreaming is a byproduct of memories being consolidated during sleep. There's been some research supporting this. For example, findings that improvements are made after somebody dreams about a complex task. Wish fulfillment is a theory on dreaming asserted by Sigmund Freud. It basically suggested that dreams represent a way someone can fulfill repressed wishes, such as aggression and sexual instinct. Though much of his assertions have been debunked, there is some truth to repressed content asserting itself in the dream world. Dream rebound theory has suggested that repressing something tends to result in dreaming about it. Threat simulation theory suggests that dreaming is a kind of VR to help prepare us for events in the real world. One piece of research that gives credence to this theory reported that the severely traumatized children reported a significantly greater number of dreams and their dreams included a higher number of threatening dream events, as would be expected if this theory were the case. 
Now, these aren't the only theories. There are others suggesting that dreams assist with creativity, provide coping in a safe environment, or are just a result of our brains interpreting external stimuli while we sleep. These are just a few examples. About 20% of the general population experience nightmares every week. Stress and PTSD have long been considered causofactors for nightmares, though worry, depersonalization, hallucinatory experiences, and paranoia have also been suggested as causes of nightmares. Sleep paralysis has often been associated with waking nightmares. If you wake up in sleep paralysis, you're in a transitory stage of sleep and tend to experience hallucinations due to elements of REM sleep still being active. Now, the experience of waking up and being unable to move is generally unsettling to most people and will trigger their fight or flight response. This will often combine with hallucinations to produce unsettling visuals or sounds. The hag is one of these occurrences where people will see a shadowy figure sit on their chest. I've personally had this experience, and the shadow figures love to scream in my face, which ties into the next phenomenon, exploding head syndrome. Usually this occurs as you are attempting to sleep. Right before you fall asleep, you'll hear a loud noise or crash. I've experienced screaming, but it can take other forms as well, such as a loud bang, a clash of cymbals, a bomb going off, and many others. It's usually painless, but can cause issues sleeping if it occurs frequently. We can look at dreams, nightmares, and even the sleep paralysis hallucinations and wonder, do they have meanings? Are they your unconscious trying to tell you something? Well, this was the view of Sigmund Freud, who separated dreams into manifest content and latent content. Manifest content is the stuff you actually perceive in the dream, the tree, the person, or other object. The latent content is the symbolic meaning of the manifest content, like the tree representing the vitality of your new relationships with people, for example. He held that a very specific symbol represented a very specific meaning. Jung was another psychotherapist who held that dreams content was pulled from the collective unconscious where archetypes are inherited. He believed that dreams had meanings as well, and that they provided insight on the collective unconscious. Unlike Freud, Jung believed that you had to know a great deal about an individual to be able to interpret their dream. More modern theories suggest that dreams themselves don't have meaning, but that we construct the dream stories after we wake up. Why we choose some story over a different story still has the merit of being investigated under these theories, despite not suggesting inherent meaning. It seems that all had some insight. We are meaning-making creatures after all. We found that dreams usually correlate with age, gender, culture, and with, and with personal preoccupations. One researcher noted, we have shown that 75 to 100 dreams from a person gives us a very good psychological portrait of that individual. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on dreams. We discussed what dreams are, why we have them, dream meanings, nightmares, and lucid dreaming. If you got value from this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.